Okay. We live. Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Jack Leland from the Innovation Baptist Church. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'd like to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. We're thankful to God that he has uh, allowed us to use technology uh, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, before we go into our message today, we'd like to uh, wish all of our members of Innovation whose birthday is in the month of April a happy birthday. And those who are uh, celebrating an anniversary uh, in the month of uh, April, happy anniversary to you. So now as we get ready to get into the word, uh, we thank God for each of you on today. So we honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is savior and Lord and to the Holy Ghost, who is our sustainer, our comforter, our keeper. And to each of you and all of God's children, we greet you with Jesus joy. Today, we'd like to call your attention to the 13th song, song 13. And if you have your Bibles with you, if you just turn to song 13 and we'll begin reading from there. <clears throat> you will find these words recorded. How long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Having sorrows in my heart daily, how long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Line mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. The entire 13th song. Today, well, we want to speak from these words. Actually asking a question. And our topic today is, where is God? I'm sure that many of us have heard people say because of the crisis or the pandemic that is going on in our world, in our nation, many people have asked that question. And perhaps many of us as Christians have asked that question, where is God? Well, today, uh, we want to see if we can answer that question to each of us, that it may give us strength and give us protection and comfort as we go through these devastating times. Well, in this song, David wrote it when he was exhausted and depressed. David is in what we would call an affliction. His family has fallen apart. His position has crumbled. His finances are in shambles. His physical, emotional, and mental life is stretched to the breaking point. David's troubles with King Saul had gone on year after year. And he was dispirited and discouraged. He had been driven to desperate human expedience to escape his restless foe. This song was wrung out of the extremity of his soul. David, yes, David could not go another day, another week, another month, 
another year. Now, most of us has been right there at some time or another. It may be a sickness. It may be a financial problem. It may be a family problem. It may even be a fellowship of the saints problem. We'll probably find ourselves in David's shoes over and over again. But I found out that man's extremity is God's opportunity. You see, when we are perplexed and desperate, that is usually when we see God begin to work. But before he does anything about our situation, he wants to do something about ourselves. He wants to do something about us. We want God to deal with our complications. God wants to develop our character. We cry and cry loud, hurry up God. He says, it is your move. I want you to move. I won't move until you move. That is what Song 13 is all about. As I examined this text, I discovered that David was in the midst of pain. He had problems on every hand. He was in the midst of spiritual frustration. Yes, David. So let's notice, first of all, David's pain, David's grief, David's sorrow. Look at, let's look at verse number one and verse two. David says, how long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? David used that phrase, how long, four times in those first two verses. It seems to me that David is in the midst of real pain and problems. Yes, his, his seeming abandonment, it's, it seems like God has pushed him aside and has left him. Remember now, David is in trouble. So he asked God, literally what he's saying is, God, where are you? How long am I going to go through what I'm going through? And many of us today perhaps have asked each other or someone else or even God, how long will we have to go through this crisis, this pandemic? And I want us to understand today that it won't be as long as we think. David, yes, David, he's experiencing seeming abandonment. It seems to David, God had forgotten him. So David says in verse one, how long? Will thou forget me, O Lord? It seems like sometimes when we are in the midst of our problems and our pain and our confusion that uh, it seems like we have been abandoned by God and that God has forgotten us. 
But we understand as children of God that God doesn't forget us. But David takes it a little further. It seems to David also that God has forsaken him. That's in verse two. Listen what he says. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow, pain, and grief in my heart on a daily basis? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? So David, David is saying in the midst of his pain that it seems like God has forsaken me. But the Bible teaches us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, the thing that we must understand that David is in a hurry, but God is not in a hurry. The old song of the church is, and I all often quote this, is that he is a God that you can't hurry, but he'll be there. Don't you worry. So, so in the midst of David's pain, his seeming abandonment, then David takes it a step further. We see David's pain call, calls him his sorrowful abasement. David has been brought low. He is at a low point in his life. He has been brought low. We see that in verse two. He has been brought low by his feelings. Listen what verse two say. David says, how long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart? David's feelings is getting the best of him. And it calls him to feel low, to feel like he is in the, in, the, in the basement of his life. But we must understand that we as Christians, we don't operate because of our feelings. Because God is much more than a feeling. Sometimes we feel good and sometimes we feel not so good. So, so, so David is in a low state of his life and is brought on by his feelings. But secondly, it is also brought on by his foes or his enemies. In the second clause of verse two, listen what it says. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Many times, my brothers and sisters, when we are in the midst of our pain, our grief, our sorrow, and when we feel like we are at the lowest point of our lives, it seems like to us that our enemy has the best of us. It seemed in David's experience as though the enemy Saul was bound to win. And many times when we're in the low state of our lives, it feels like the enemy, our foes, is going to win. So, what does David do? Well, remember now, David is in pain. He's in grief. He's in sorrow. And he asks God, how long? Four times. He was wondering where God was. So when we are in the midst of our pain, our grief and sorrow, what do we need to do? Well, I believe that David will teach us a lesson today. So what David does is David moves from his pain to his prayer. That's in the next two verses. David moves from pain to prayer. And that's what we need to do. Listen what it says in verse three. Consider 
and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Wow. Listen what David prayer is saying to God. David tells God he is overwhelmed by his emotions. In other words, David's emotions has gotten the best of him. Verse three, I'll read it again. This is what he says in his prayer. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Light mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. He was worn out with his long, drawn out emotional drain that he was afraid it would bring him to an early grave. David's emotions has gotten the best of him. But even at that period, he nailed his emotions to the word of God. And saints, that's what we have to do. When we are going through our pain and it seems like our feelings and our emotion is getting the best of us, we need to get our feelings and our emotions to the word of God. Not only in David's prayer that he tells God that he's overwhelmed by his emotions, he also tells God that he is overwhelmed by his enemies. That's in the next verse, verse four. He says, lest my enemies say, I have, I have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Wow. David feels like his enemies is getting the best of him, but he takes that situation to God, to the word of God. What God was really doing here, I believe, was teaching David, the value of being utterly in his will. Yes, when he realized that he's still in God's will, and when we realize we're still in God's will, regardless of situation and circumstance, then God can teach us something. When we realize we're in his will, then the moves, even when they look like losses, will be eternal and glorious again. Even when what we do or what we experience or what we see look like we're losing, but because we realize as children of God that we are in the will of God, then our losses will look like glorious gains. Yes, David is asking God, where are you? How long are we going to experience these crises, these financial crises, the food crises, the health crisis. How long? How long, God? Well, when we ask ourselves, or when we ask God, or when we ask others, God, where are you? Well, I want you to know he is here. So what happened with David? David realized that when he was asking God, where are you? He realized after he prayed where God was. 
So David moves from pain to prayer. And then to praise. Look at verse 5. And verse 6. Our last two verses of the text. It says, or it reads, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. David. Yes, King David. Yes, the David that, that slew the lion and the bear. The David that we know that killed the giant Goliath. The David that we know that is known as the man after God's own heart. David found himself in a precarious situation where his enemies was all around and seemed like they had gotten the best of him. And many of us today, because of one thing or another, it seemed like the enemy has gotten or is getting the best of us. So David moved from pain to prayer and then to praise. David has now moved to the final stage of the Saul's experience in a time of testing and in a time of terror. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a time of testing. And also in the time of terror, a time of fright. And many of us, we are frightened because God hadn't moved yet. And we are asking the question, it may not be out loud, it may be to yourselves, where is God? How long he's going to allow us to experience this, this dark, and dreary, and devastating period. Well, David, now he has come through his tears. He has come through his tears to truth and through truth to triumph. Yes, he experienced the pain, but he believed that if he have a little talk with God, that God will make everything all right. My brothers and sisters, that's one of the most important things that we can do in this season of a pandemic is to make sure that you communicate with your father God. So David has a talk with God and when he talked with God, things began to change in his spirit. They didn't change right then from a physical standpoint, but things began to change in his spirit. Yes, I know what you're saying. I know what you're thinking. I hear you well. Because many people have wondered how David in this song could swing so swiftly from gloom to gladness. 
how David so swiftly could move from pain to praise? Good question. Well, let's see. I believe that the secret is found in verse 3 of the song. Verse 3 says, as he begins his prayer, says, Consider, O Lord, my God, lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. What is that really saying to us? Well, I believe that David moved from gloom to gladness when he get his eyes firmly fixed on the power and the promises of the Lord, his God. When we get our eyes, get our hearts, our minds, our spirits fixed on the promise and the power of the Lord our God, then we would experience a change in our attitudes and our Yes, David is praising now. He's praising God now because first of all, of God's salvation or God's deliverance. David is praising God now. Notice now he moved from prayer to praise. So he's praising. David praises God for God's deliverance. Deliverance from what? Well, he praises God for delivering him from sin, you know he did sin, from self. Many times, my brothers and sisters, we have to praise God from ourselves because basically self simply desires to do wrong. So David praised God for delivering him from sin, self, Satan, and even King Saul. Yes, at this point, he's still in trouble, literally. But he, he praises God because of God's salvation or God's deliverance. Now David is standing on victory side. What does that say to us? Well, if God did it for David, he'll do it for me and you. So we can also stand on victory side. We can stand on victory side and we can praise God for our salvation, our deliverance. Because not only is God able and willing to deliver us from our sin, from our self, from, our, from Satan, and from the King Saul's in our lives, but he will also deliver us from our situations. Situations that's very global situations that we are in collectively and situations that we are in individually, bad situations, problems and perplexities. But God can deliver us. So David is praising God. He's still in trouble. He's praising God 
for his deliverance because he believed that God is going to deliver. The same David who started out by asking a question, how long? How long? Or where is God? Well, he is where he always been. He is where he was when his son died on the cross. And his son, Jesus the Christ, said these words, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? God is still there where he was then. David realized that, so he praises God now because of God's salvation or God's deliverance. Then David takes it a step further. He also praises God's sufficiency. That God is a God of enough. Verse 6. He said, I will sing unto the Lord. I will praise the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Now, the question is, because I want you to get this. Has David, has David's actual immediate circumstances changed? I kind of let you know earlier that he's still in trouble. So the question is, has his actual immediate circumstances change? Has Saul called off the bloodhounds at this time? Or is Saul dead? Has David received some physical help at this time? Well, the answer to all of those questions or no, nothing has changed in David's experience, but here it is. David could praise God because God hasn't changed. And that's what we have to remember is that regardless of our situation and circumstances, that God has not changed as being God. God is who he said he was. He is because the Bible teaches us he's the same today as yesterday and he'll be the same forevermore. So David realized that God has not changed. Regardless of how severe, how terrible, how frightening things may seem in this present age, we must remember that God has not changed. He is a God of enough. Worthy to be praised. So we praise him now in the midst of a pandemic. We praise him now in the midst of a crisis. We praise him now because the victory is ours. Yes, we will have to go through some battles. Yes, we may have to go through some wars. Yes, we may have to go through some tough times. But we praise God in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our situations and circumstances, because, because of whose we are. We know that we have we have the victory. So let's shout in our storm. Let's praise God in this pandemic. Because when it's all said and done, when the dust is settled, God 
is still in charge. And he rules and he super rules. I remember an old song of the church that used to sing, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Yes, David was in trouble. David was seemingly always in and out of trouble. But David knew where to go. Although he was feeling down and out, he was feeling depressed. Sorrow was all around him. Pain was everywhere. But he remembered, I believe, that man or mankind must always pray. So he prayed. And after praying, even before he was delivered from his trouble, he praised God. Praise God for deliverance. Praise God for salvation. And he praised God for God's sufficiency. And he said that I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. He has given me what I need. So my brothers and sisters, don't get weary in well-doing. Keep your eyes on God. He's able, he's capable of delivering us from anything that the enemy sends our way. Where is God? Here he is. He's where he always been. He's still sitting high and looking low. He's still a God who provides. He's still a God who protects. He's still a God who said that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So trust him. Trust him. Trust God and watch him move and move in a mighty way. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for reminding us through David, the psalmist, that when we feel like you're not there, when we feel like you have left us, we feel like we're in the lowest state of our lives, that you are still there. Remind us, O oh God, that if we hold on to your unchanging hands, that everything will be all right. The storm, this crisis didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Regardless of how severe the storm or the crisis may be, it came to pass. And we pray now, God, for those who may be watching or listening who don't really have a relationship with you. We pray, oh God, that they would receive your son, Jesus the Christ, as their personal savior, that they will submit their lives to a savior that loves us in spite of us, who died for our sins and rose for our redemption. We pray for those who have backslidden, that they will come running back to the throne of grace. We thank you now for your mighty power. We thank you for allowing us to be able to communicate and even talk to each other in the midst of this devastation. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. 
Amen. To each of you, and especially to our Innovation family, we will see you again on uh, Wednesday night at 6.30 for our Wednesday night gospel explosion. We'll see you then. But until then, make sure that you follow the guidelines as much as possible of the CDC and stay home, get, get some rest and get rejuvenated, get revived, get in the word and do some things that you hadn't had a chance to do. Yes, this storm too came to pass. So make sure that you, you don't put yourselves in harm's way and make sure that you communicate with God. Be able to speak the words of truth because the power of life and death is in your mouth. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy persuade you that it's never going to be over because our God is a supplier of our every need. God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer.